All that stuff on the top shelf, plus this, is all my mother's stuff. Wow. You know, so like I have all these books that she was in, right? Like Nine Plays by Black Women and Screenplays of the African American Experience and Real Women. This is where that story is that I regret not including in the collection. I'm Nina Collins, and um, I'm the daughter of Kathleen Collins, the playwright and filmmaker and writer. I'm a mom. I have four kids. I live here in Brooklyn Heights. I um, was a literary agent and scout for many years, for like 18 years, and uh, then went back to school and got a master's in something called narrative medicine, and now I'm writing and um, running a group, a kind of social media group for women over 40 called What Would Virginia Woolf Do, which I'm also writing a book for. And then I've been you know, super involved in this process of getting my mother's work back out into the world, which has been going on for like, I guess the last five or six years, but really kind of been big in the last two years or so. This is the draft of her unfinished novel. This is like, I mean, they're just her typewritten, scrawled on pages. It's really pretty amazing. Around five or six years ago, I had the films remastered and found a distributor, Milestone Films, who um, took them on and said that they would be available in DVDs, and I felt like that was really the, my job at hand, was to make sure they were preserved for academics. So about a year after that, I got a phone call from um, a woman named Bridget Hughes, who's the editor of a literary journal called A Public Space, and Bridget was doing um, an essay on forgotten women writers. And she asked if my mother had any work that was unpublished. And I said, yes, I have a whole closet full of work that's been unpublished. And so I sent her a few stories, and Bridget loved them. And she published um, Interiors. And so then, because I really know the publishing world, and it's the world I grew up in, um, you know, five years ago, I never could have sold a collection of my mother's stories, a dead black woman from the 80s. Like, no one would have looked at those stories. But because of the success of Losing Ground and then this story in a public space, I thought, maybe I can sell these. So I pulled together a collection. And they were all the original typewritten stories that I had from my mom's. And one of my oldest, closest friends is an agent, like I was. And so we um, then submitted them and sold it to Echo, a division of HarperCollins. Here's um, history from Gouldtown and the Conwells. So that's like a letter from her mother and articles about the family. And, you know, I just have kept kind of everything. The stories are really from her 20s so they gave me a picture of what her life was then then of it was like then although there are things that she's left out like she went through a very bad depression in her 20s that you don't really get a sense of here although it's a little bit in the title story that like working in a closet in the back of this dark apartment one of the ones I love that I don't think has been mentioned much yet in reviews but I love stepping back which is the one where she just kind of talks about being a black woman who you know has so much grace and you know intellectualism and kind of um, something like he's never seen. But then in the very end of the story, she's afraid to have sex with him. You know, I love when she says, "You know, how could I occupy the splendid four four poster bed tastefully enough? How could I pass beneath the candelabras and undress tastefully enough and make love tastefully enough? No colored woman could. No colored woman could." I I, I love this story. Because I think she's being really honest, you know, about... I mean, she came from a very bourgeois family. She went to Skidmore. She studied in Paris. You know, she was incredibly, um, you know, sophisticated. But she still had this... And you see it also in the story, um, the one with the college student, when her father won't speak to her because she's cut her hair. I mean, that also has this, you know, has similar themes, right? And it's very true of her upbringing. Like, she was raised in this very conventional family. Her father was a funeral home director who went on to become a um, principal of a middle school in Jersey City that's actually still named after him. And, you know, they really expected her to become a teacher. I mean, everyone in the, their family was either, a, you know, a teacher or a principal or, um, and, you know, she went off and had, took this kind of completely crazy bohemian path, but, and crazy to her family. But, um, but the idea that she couldn't cut her hair, you know, that that would be shameful was intense. This is her, um, I think, in Paris. She um, went, she graduated from college in 63, and then I think she went to Paris in 66, okay. and stayed there till 68, and studied at the Sorbonne. When, when I was debating whether to have the films remastered, 
I spoke to an academic named Terry Francis, who at the mm -hmm. time was teaching at Yale. I think she's now at Indiana. Mm -hmm. And Terry's a black woman, super smart. And you know, I wasn't sure whether to do it. It was, it was like $25,000. And I didn't know that anyone would want to see these movies. And, um, you know, really in the end, I felt like, well, she, she was my mother and she you know, took care. I just have to do it. But it was kind of a hard decision. And Terry said, she had an old 16 millimeter version of Losing Ground that she had shown a couple times that was kind of falling apart. And she said, you know, when I show this, the young black women in my class, they start to cry and they've never seen characters like this. And you have to do it for that reason, really. And so that's amazing to be able to bring this work out in the world and feel like it's going to affect and inspire, you know, not just black women, but everyone. But still, it, it, feels, it feels like a real gift. Just the fact that I think this book will be taught now academically and that the film will be taught and that people will really hear her voice is amazing, you know, and it's everything. It's great.